Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using Toko Reanimator, a new plugin effect designed exclusively for Final Cut Pro 10 that brings you a comprehensive suite of tools to quickly and easily repair dead pixels, lens dirt issues, and other small scale artifacts which could otherwise spoil a great shot. So let's get started. I've got a shot here which has a very obvious lens dirt blemish which I really need to get rid of. So I'll go to my effects browser and select Reanimator and drag it onto my clip in the timeline. Okay, nothing's happened yet and that's because my first step is to select the problem area and I'll do this using the on-screen control. I'll try to get it reasonably well centered over the area but I won't worry too much at this stage. Now that's done, I'm going to come over to the inspector and I'm about to click on the HUD enable switch. HUD stands for Heads Up Display and all that means is a graphical interface superimposed over your work area that gives you at a glance feedback on the task in hand. So here goes, let's hit that HUD enable button. Okay, so what's happened? First of all, we've got the graphical interface I mentioned, but notice also that the shot in the Final Cut canvas has been automatically zoomed and panned, so that the problem area we've selected sits bang in the middle of the HUD, just where we want it in order to carry out our repair. You'll also see a bunch of sliders and numbers, and we'll come to what they do in just a moment. First of all, we want to fine tune the area that we're going to be working on. If we look at this transparent red square in the center of the HUD, we can see it sitting more or less directly over the dirt problem. This is the mask or cutout that will define the area we're going to fix. We want to get it to line up as well as we can at this stage, so we'll use the fine tune sliders to get it just perfect. Now we'll adjust the scale and the aspect ratio and apply a bit of rotation, because the dirt artifact is a bit of an odd shape. Finally, we'll add some roundness to the corners, and we'll increase the feather just a little bit, so we'll get a nice smooth blend when we come to do our repair. Now that I've got my mask set up, I'm going to turn off its overlay using the Show Mask Guide toggle switch. And we're ready to start fixing the problem. In the vast majority of cases, there's really only one adjustment that you'll need to make, and that's with the X and Y position offset controls. In this case, I'm going to drag the X position slider till I start seeing the problem disappear. As you can see, that's dragging in a sample of grass from the surrounding area, and that works pretty well just as it is. Maybe a small amount of Y offset and we're done. Notice how the display readouts have updated to reflect the changes we've made, so we can see at a glance what the offsets are doing at any time. At this point, all we need to do is hit the HUD enable switch one more time, and the interface goes away, and all being well, the shot is done and dusted. But just to make life difficult, and really put Reanimator through its paces, I've chosen a shot with a great deal of movement in it, both the car itself as it races around the track, and the camera as it follows it. Clearly in a case like this, one simple offset is not going to work for the whole shot, and we'll need to go through and make some minor adjustments. Let's jump to this frame where our original offset isn't working. I'm going to quickly bypass the effect to check on the problem with the HUD still activated. As you can see, the dirt artifact is sitting across a couple of different edges in the image, and that means we need to be a bit more clever in how we deal with it. I think the best solution in this case will be to drag in a clean bit of tyre from down below and maybe move it across with the X offset. Well the problem now is that our sample isn't quite matching the orientation of the tyre, so let's fix that using the rotation offset control. About 10 degrees looks like it'll take care of that. There's still another problem though, and that's because we've sampled an area that's a bit darker than the one we want to replace. Again, that's an easy fix. We're going to use the exposure control to bring up the brightness until we get a good match. A value of 45 seems to be doing the trick. I could probably spend a little more time adjusting those values for an even better match, but you can already see how easy it is to fix up even tricky areas like this. 
The only thing you'll need to bear in mind is if you're making changes to your initial setup as in this example, you'll need to step back a frame from the one you want to update and make sure you keyframe the parameters you want to change. If the new setup is going to last for just a single frame, you'll also want to keyframe the frame after the new repair as well as the one before. OK, I think we're done, so we can turn off the HUD and check the result. As you can see, even a tough shot like this won't take any time to fix with Reanimator. You'll find that the custom setup and the dedicated on-screen tools really help you to power through your shot fixes and hopefully make a tedious task a lot more fun. Tokyo Reanimator is available exclusively through FX Factory and you can download a fully functional demo right now to try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching.